Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be talking about how Annie did in the 10-way rumble over at BoggleBots. Now, if you have not seen the 10-way last chance rumble, uh, spoilers for that video. So, stop right now, there'll be a link to that in the description. Go ahead, go and watch that, probably watch that a couple of times, then come back here and we'll discuss it. Uh, so, I'll just give you guys a couple of seconds. All right, I'm assuming if you're still watching this, you are all caught up and you have gone and you've seen the Last Chance Rumble. Uh, and you know how all of that goes down. Uh, so we're going to talk about all of this, but first up, I'm going to reiterate what I said in my last BoggleBots video about judges. Uh, I'm very thankful to the judges. They do a very hard job. Every judge is different. Every set of rules is different. And... At the end of the day, a judge's decision is what it is, and you have to move on and keep going with that. You guys are well within your right to think that one robot won or one other robot didn't, but just be nice with the way you do this, please. Keep the salt to a bare minimum, uh, have your opinion, express your opinion, but please be nice. The judges are great people, the production team are great people. Uh, yeah, everything is, it's, it's all good. Um, and as I said in the previous BoggleBots video, I did uh, the two things that a spinner should never do. I lost the weapon, and of course, I let it go to a judge's decision, which, let's be honest, in a 10-way rumble with uh, that many spinners and that many hardy robots, uh, this one was pretty much always gonna go to a judge's decision, I believe. Yeah, so that is that is what that is. Like I said, just keep keep the keep the salt to a minimum, please. Like I said, just be nice with the way you talk about the rumble. I this one I was actually more sure of than the Clause 2 fight. In the Clause 2 fight, I thought it was very 50-50. Uh, this fight, I thought I'd done enough. Um, I thought I'd done enough to get the judge's decision and move through, but they saw it differently, and that is what it is. Um, so, there was some unaired audio at the end of that uh, where I... Like I said, I was a little bit sad and disappointed about all of this. I was also a little bit tired, and I was really keen for another fight with Annie. Uh, in my post-fight interview with Bob, I talked about whiteboard fights because I wanted another fight. Annie was doing pretty well considering everything that has happened, and I was really keen to jump back in the arena and do another fight. Uh, and I got vocal about that, probably too much so. Uh, and... Yeah, a big, big thank you to the production crew because they actually did schedule me in for a whiteboard. However, uh, the whole thing ended up running over, like all of the BoggleBots filming ended up running over and that whiteboard was never filmed, uh, which was unfortunate. But like I said, a massive thank you to the production team because they did actually endeavor to get me another fight, even though I'd had three already. So they were being very, very generous to me. Uh, and that was that was awesome. Those guys are amazing, and uh, the work they put into BoggleBots is insane. Especially like, once again, I need to call out the editing on this. The editing on this was pretty damn good, considering that there was so much going on in that arena. Uh, I don't believe you could edit that any better way, because whichever way you edit it, you're always going to miss something off one side of the screen, especially in that first minute, which we'll talk about in half a second. Because uh, that first minute was just insane. So many things were happening all the time. So they did a really good job of capturing that and keeping the main action on video at all times, I believe. All right. The other uh, couple of things we'll quickly talk about before we get into this. Shock mounted googly eyes. This is actually a thing that I've started doing since BoggleBots. Anytime I'm facing a big spinner, I always put on the bigger googly eyes and have a shock mounting pad in behind them. It is a little bit silly, but I like it. It's a lot of fun. Also, the shock mounting pads were actually provided to me by Dave from team, uh, from, from the Sharks to Trackian team. So thank you, Dave. I still have half a sheet of those. So I'm using them to this day on Annie, are you okay? Uh, and then finally, there was one piece of, un another piece of unaired audio where right before this match started, I was standing there, controller in hand. Annie is sitting on the other side of the arena from me. There are crazy spinners going on. There are crazy robots in the arena. And I just had this, oh my God moment. And I turned to Shane, the ref, and was just like, is this real? Are we about to do this? Because, 
Oh my god! <laughs> Um, so yeah, apparently though they didn't have a camera on the side of the pit, or at least I don't think they had a camera on the side of the arena that I was standing, so they didn't actually capture footage of me doing that, but oh man, I, it's still a sentiment I hold to this day. That was an unreal fight, and I loved every minute of that fight, it was so, so good. Okay, so we should actually start talking about the fight now. Uh, yeah, the first minute, as I uh, put out before, it is a crazy first minute of a fight. I would suggest going back, re-watching this fight, especially the first minute, running on either 0.5 speed or 0.25 speed in your YouTube player. YouTube will allow you to do that. The only thing is this does mess up the commentary somewhat because it tries to slow everything down and it kind of gets a bit jittery. So you might want to turn the audio off for that. I mean, the commentary is great. They, those guys do a great job, but at the half speed or the quarter speed, it will just sound a bit garbled. So turn that off and just watch this first minute unfold at slow speed. And I promise you that to catch everything, you will still need to pause the video at 0.25 speed because I've literally just done that myself. Um, so, we're going to start by talking about Halo, because right in front of me, I have the can off of one of Halo's drive motors, which has some good nicks in it, some very surprising nicks in it, I should say. Uh, and at the time, on the day, I believed, or they believed, that I had taken the wheel out. I could not remember this happening for the life of me. Uh, in the first minute, I got some really, really good jabs on Halo. Some nice in undercutter shots where I got all the way into those wheels. However, the wheels survived those two shots. And if you watch the video back really closely, you'll see that it's a straight tooth-to-tooth -tooth collision which finally dislodges the wheel. So what I believe actually happened here is that I'd hit these hard enough to break the circlip off the back of them, which meant that the, the motor was barely holding on to the thing, and then it was that one big jolt from Daedalus that then freed up the wheel. So this this wheel is kind of uh, on both of us, both me and Daedalus after that fight, I believe. I did all of the loosening it up work, and Daedalus did the finishing it off work. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk mostly about myself, uh, or at least Annie's performance in this, because this is my fight recap video. Uh, there is a lot of other stuff happening in this first minute, uh, and I'm sure that there are a lot of other people will talk about all of that stuff in great detail. I'm just going to talk about the stuff that I remember and the stuff that I was doing. So this first minute, because it was so chaotic, I was literally just going around, taking jabs at whoever was in front of me. I wasn't really paying too much attention to anything other than really Daedalus and Drizzle, because those were the two I didn't want sneaking up behind me and getting a shot on the back. Um, so I was just kind of taking pot shots at basically anyone. I went flying around the arena multiple times, mostly off hits from my own weapon uh, into Frog and Unconscious 514. Uh, also in this, at some point, Unconscious 514 goes up against the wall and is starting to crab walk around a little bit. I went over to them and rode up their front wedge and slammed into their gripping mechanism and kind of got stuck gyroing like this, like on an angle. Uh, after that point, Unconscious 514 gets counted out, so I'm not sure if I did any real damage to them or if they were just on their last legs and I put another hit on them, which, once again, not something I normally do, but this is a 10-way fight and things just, things go a bit nuts. Um, so, and also, again, something I don't remember doing, it was just something I've just seen on the video, so, that is that. The one thing I do remember doing about this, which was very purposeful and something I was aiming for from the second this fight started, I took Daedalus' wheel. And I took that, like I said, on purpose. One of my big, big aims for this fight was to take Daedalus' wheel because there was no way I wanted that thing roaming around the arena on two wheels in full control for a full three minute fight with that many spinners in there that was just a recipe for disaster. Um, and I mean, as you saw, even without one of his wheels, he was still a recipe for the disaster. Um, yeah, so I made sure that I took that really, really early on. And uh, yeah, that, that seemed, it worked pretty well. I mean, I just needed to take the other one, I guess. Uh, so that kind of does out the first minute. We'll move on into the second minute. And in my notes, I have this titled The Frog Show. and. That's because I purely believe that the second minute, if you watch this back, it is 
all about Sir Lancer Frog because there are six bots left. There's me, there's Daedalus, there's Sir Lancer Frog, there's Drizzle, there's Bourbon, and there's Wayu. Wayu is uh, running without a weapon, so it's effectively just a push bot, but of course, most of its weight is in the weapon, so it's not particularly an effective push bot. And if you watch from kind of this point of the fight onwards, Frog is in control of a lot of this fight. Frog is not doing any damage per se, but Frog is making sure that when spinners separate, they come back together again. You watch this over and over again, and you will see Frog is like pushing Drizzle into Daedalus, pushing Daedalus into me, pushing me into Wayu. Like, all of these things are happening, and Frog has serious control of this fight and is showing no signs of any of the hits that it's taking affecting it in any way, shape, or form. He is doing such a good job here. And it's one of these kind of moments where Frog is just tanking hits that I come in to the sneaky side and take out Drizzle's wheel. So Drizzle is obviously focused fully on Frog, trying to dish out those hits, trying to get Frog to stop, and I come in and take the wheel out of Drizzle. So by this point, Drizzle has also taken out Bourbon in the most spectacular fashion. Uh, because they kind of go weapon to weapon, Drizzle yeets up, and coming back down, the weapon smashes into Drizzle, uh, into Bourbon's drum, and explodes the thing, which, oh, far out, I love this rumble, it's so much fun! <laughs> um, yeah, and Wayu went out somewhere in there as well, I honestly, I don't know when or how that happened, it's just, there's so much going on, I don't know. Uh, but then that leaves it down to me, Daedalus, Frog, and Drizzle, and there's four of us left in this thing. Um, and Daedalus and Drizzle are now down wheels, basically. And eventually Drizzle drizzles itself up and gets stuck um, on top of the Apprentice. So it's the three of us left, and of the three, Frog was the biggest threat. Um, so that's what I then did. I started to take the fight to Frog. Now, the problem with taking the fight to Frog is Frog is a massive tank. Like, I was smacking him again and again and again and getting in under the back of the wheels and everything I could do, and he took those hits so well, just amazingly well. Um, to the point that after this fight, he was still perfectly fine, and we'll talk about how he actually goes out in a second, but he could have just charged the batteries and gone straight back into the six-way had he survived out to the end of the, the competition or the end of the ten-way and made it through. Um, so he tanked those hits so well that my weapon ended up breaking. And yeah, when I said in the interview that the pulley had fallen off, that was only part of the story here. It was way worse than that. This was the pulley after that fight. Uh, it was found by Shane when he was cleaning out the arena. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that for you guys. There you go. Uh, so it is actually rounded off on top. It should look like this one, where it's got a nice little lip at the top which holds the belt on and keeps everything going, keeps everything, uh, well yeah, keeps the belt on, keeps everything spinning basically, or at least the weapon keeps spinning when that nice little top cover is on. This one, however, nowhere near like that. It has been hit many, many, many times, and it was hit by my own weapon stack up. Uh, this weapon stack up is the same one that I used at BuggleBots. It allows a lot of flex and wobble in the weapon, so the weapon was wobbling and hits, especially hits up against Sir Lancer Frog, wobbling back and forth, slamming into the pulley, degrading this pulley to the point that there was no lip left on the belt, and then it kept hitting it until the grub screws that are in here came loose and uh, dropped it off the bottom of the motor, and then I lost the belt and lost the weapon and all of that kind of stuff. But all of this is why Annie has been upgraded. So since then, Annie has been upgraded, so we've got this nice protective HDPE around the pulley, so the, the pulley cannot physically be hit by our own weapon system anymore. And also we've gone away from using grub screws and we have it bolted to the top of the motor rather than grub screwed onto the shaft of the motor, which is a lot better. So as you can see, that was a lot of damage to that pulley and weapon system, but that is, like I said, why Annie has 
the new base plate that protects the pulley from uh, taking that type of damage. And we have the new weapon, weapon stack up, which prevents the weapon from wobbling around and doing that stuff all over again. Now, with the weapon gone, I was still taking the fight to Frog because I still wholeheartedly believed uh, actually that he was the only one left, to be perfectly honest, because there was a point where after Drizzle goes out, Daedalus is kind of like sitting and spinning in the corner with one weapon going and the one wheel, and it's just kind of like ambling around in circles. So A, I didn't really want to take that on, and B, I honestly thought he was going to get counted out. So I kept taking the fight to Frog and kept going at him, and eventually I ended up pushing him up on top of the bearing race out of Bourbon's drum, which got, yeah, I think the bearing was still in Bourbon after Drizzle hit it, but then Daedalus hit Bourbon again after it was dead, and the bearing race came out, and that is what I ended up sticking Frog up on top of. Now, I couldn't remember that. I My memory of the fight was hitting Frog until the weapon died, continuing to push Frog, pushing Frog into the wall, and him stopping, but let's be honest, I should have realized that wasn't the case. Frog is way too durable for that. He doesn't just stop in stupid ways. Uh, so this, in this case, he got hung up. He got hung up on top of that piece of bearing, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, and yeah, and it was unfortunate for me because then I had Drizzle, uh, not Drizzle, Daedalus left. And there is one other piece of unaired audio here, which after Frog stops and I kind of come back and I'm nestled and slowed down for half a second, I turned to Tim, the, the ref, and went, is he still in? Because by this time, Daedalus had got moving again, had got out of that corner, I think by slamming into the wall and flying across the arena. Uh, and yeah, he was. He was still in, but I, I was very unsure about that. So Weaponless, I decided the only option I had was to charge, completely forgetting that I could go over and activate the pit and get the pit down, and that actually probably would have been the smartest move. To get the pit down, go behind him, because he wasn't all that controlled, drive him into the pit, job done. But I, uh, I wasn't thinking about that that way, I was thinking about Annie as a tank and just tanking the hits with the front wedge, and showing control and aggression over Daedalus to hopefully get the judge's decision on this one. Now, that's not what ended up happening. Because Daedalus was kind of wobbling wildly out of control, the front wedge didn't actually take too much damage. There is a small nick in one side from Daedalus, but other than that, this didn't take any real damage. What actually ended up happening was Daedalus was hitting across the top of Annie and managed to hit the wheels a couple of times. Now, normally this is okay, and normally they're totally fine with that, and they were for the first couple, and then there was one really big one right on a wheel which just kind of locked up a gearbox a little bit, but not a lot. So it had a sticking point in it, so right at the end of the fight, I was crab walking a little bit, but as the, the bell stopped, I actually got full drive or partial drive back on that side. I could still drive in a straight line, I just had had the stick pointed to try and turn one way and it kind of drove in a straight line because one of the wheels, one of the gearboxes was starting to stick. Um, so that did count against me. The judges did watch this fight multiple times over trying to work out who actually won this one. And one of the things they brought up to me after this was the fact that I was crab walking at the end of it, so therefore I'd had both damage to the weapon and damage to the drive system, whereas Daedalus had only taken damage to his drive system. So it counted against me. Um, yeah, and like I said, it was, it was one of those things. And then, look, the other thing too is I think Daedalus did deserve this win. Um, at the end of this fight, he goes through, he puts new wheels on his robot, he charges the thing up, and he puts it straight into the six-way. I had to replace motors, I had to replace my weapon system, like my belts and pulleys and everything. Uh, I had a lot of work to do, and it would have taken me way more time to get myself up and going and into the six-way. So, uh, just purely on the fact that he survived better than me, he probably did actually deserve this one. But, to be fair, I don't think either of us would have won it if Frog didn't get caught up. If, if I hadn't pushed Frog up onto that bearing race, which that wasn't really intentional, I was just trying to push Frog around, show aggressive aggression against Frog. Um, 
if he hadn't got high sided, I truly believe that this would have been a frogs. It would have been frogs fight for sure. He he just had the back half of that fight until he got beached. So that is that is what it is. Um, anyway, this video is getting kind of long and rambly, so I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, once again, massive thank you to the BuggleBots team. Uh, if there is a season three, I will be applying on day one. Annie is going to be back with a better weapon system. I think I've finally worked out what all the issues are with her weapon system, but you guys will have to wait until Saturday when I do my breakdown of Annie at January's uh, ARC's January meet, because we talk a bit more about the weapon and uh, how we fix that going through into the future. But yeah, if BuggleBots has a season three, I will be applying on day one. I want to fight Claws 2 again. I want to fight Daedalus again. I want to fight Drizzle again. I want to fight everyone. I really, really want to go back to BuggleBots. The crew is fantastic. All of the competitors are fantastic people. I'm, I'm just so, so keen to go back. And for all of you, there is some great, great stuff coming up still with BuggleBots. There are some great fights in the final that you won't want to miss. There is some whiteboards coming up as well that you won't want to miss. Uh, so stick with it, stick over there, keep watching BuggleBots. It is great. Uh, yeah, and that's all that I've got for today. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.